reckless and irresponsible. That is the description applied to Governor Roy Cooper's plan for state spending, despite the crushing impact of COVID-19 on North Carolinians who pay the taxes, thousands of whom have been put out of work by the governor's statewide shutdown order. Joe Coletti is a senior fellow for the John Locke Foundation. He authored the analysis of the governor's spending plan, joins us now to talk about what is inside that plan. Joe, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. First of all, give us a sense of how COVID-19 has impacted the state in terms of revenues and services that Mm -hmm. uh, the state had anticipated providing. Yeah, so uh, the the first the first impact and why the the governor needs to act on this is that uh, it reduced the income tax that we're able to receive and the sales and sales and use tax that the state receives the income tax uh, because with the shutdown of of activity uh, both voluntary and then state mandated uh, people were losing jobs uh, and 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 then the you had the federal government delay income tax deadlines and uh, for ta- filing and for for paying, and the state followed suit. So instead of getting that money in April, it's now in July. So that had a huge impact on on income tax as well. And then the sales tax fell also as a result of the closures and the and the uh, and the not going out of of, of folks. So yeah, stores there's no aren't open. No People sales. No restaurants. Yeah. No right. Uh, and and there's only so much you can buy off Amazon. So <laughs> I don't uh, know about that. <laughs> I may have a personal testimony there, but that's another show. <laughs> uh, but the, those two things, uh, the the loss of sales tax revenue and the loss of income tax revenue, hurt the state's bottom. Line. We still don't know what the full impact of that is, but we know that March, April, and May have been significantly down as a result. Then, uh, because you have the additional need and more people are losing, have, are out of work, and with school shutdown, you have increasing expenses for uh, K-12 schools and for universities about make with making the transition to distance learning. You have other uh, medi- more Medicaid potential spending and more health care potential spending. And with outbreaks in nursing homes and in prisons, you have more spending going in those directions. So there's a lot of additional money that needs to go – that needs to be spent. Uh, and so – and you're doing that at a time that revenues are falling. And it only makes sense for the governor to start reeling back the spending that is is already is already happening. And it took him a long time to start doing that. Uh, Joe, it sounds like a really ugly fiscal picture, right. frankly, you know, and, and the whole um, the medical aspect of COVID-19 aside. We won't talk about that in, in this interview. But fiscally, this is just really ugly. So as, as you mentioned, one would think based on all of this, you know, uh, increasing demands for needs, less revenue that will be coming in, that the chief executive of the state would be putting together a plan that would be uh, reigning in spending, right. paring back exactly what it is that the state can do Apparently, that's not what Governor Cooper is doing, though. Not, no, not nearly to the extent that, that other governors have done in the past. So uh, it, it took from the time that he issued the stay-at-home order on March 17th on, on St. Patrick's Day uh, until the end of April to say, this we're going to take some steps to start peeling back spending. The first of those is uh, it, it was a travel freeze. Well, that made sense. That was kind of already happening, right? Because right. nobody's Can't going go out there, of your right? house. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, but put a put a limit on hiring, put a limit on salary ex- uh, increases, and on and on contracts that were already in place. So, reducing purchases, and most of that all all, all makes sense. But uh, Governor uh, Governor Purdue and Governor Easley, ten years ago and twenty years ago, when faced with similar large revenue shortfalls that that we're anticipating this time 6.6% this year 9.9% next year uh, so a total of 4.2 billion dollars between the two the two fiscal years when they had similar uh, reductions in revenue uh, governor they both said they both told agencies send back money those are called reversions we at the end of the year we need to have some money back from you they told them to implement savings plans and looking for 5 to 7% s- s- uh, spending reductions the in addition to the freezes on hiring on 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 salaries on travel on other purchases and governor cooper and hasn't done this has not done that and that's that's where the the 
where you start to that's where I, I, he gets a reckless and irresponsible is that uh, there the state started off in relatively good shape because the governor was asking for way too much wanted to there was capital that both he and the and the general assembly wanted he wanted higher teacher raises than the than the general assembly wanted uh, and and because they couldn't come to an agreement on those things that money has not been spent and so we're fortunate to have that available but even with the money that's unspent and uh, attached to the savings reserve, that's barely going to get us through the the anticipated revenue shortfall for the next year. And, and that, that doesn't even count the potential for a, a major storm in the area, which the last one cost us $750 million out of the rainy day fund and doesn't count the, the spending that's been going on at NCDOT that has raised that 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 has raised the the condemnation of the state auditor. Joe, um, with this situation looming, one would think that unusual steps, very serious steps, would right. have to be taken because it's such an unusual situation. We've also heard the phrase "share the pain" right. bandied about a lot by the governor's administration, and understandably so. Unprecedented times. We all understand that. But is there any way that we can reasonably expect to go forward, knowing we're in the situation that we are in, without making some serious cuts, at the very least, to spending growth, if not actual spending? I mean, isn't that what share the pain is all about, state government having to buy into that as well? That's usually what uh, share – yeah, everybody everybody is is part of the sharing, yeah. Uh, And – and and one of the things that that governor both Purdue and Easley did was they said when you're making these reductions make them long term look for recurring reductions so they were looking for how do you change the way state government operates so that state government can be stronger on the other side of it than it was coming into it and and when you're doing the the temporary reductions that that governor Cooper is asking for uh, and not asking for those significant savings, uh, not only are you raising the likelihood that you're going to have to go back to the state citizens and raise what is likely going to be the sales tax, because that's what gets you revenue quickly. Um, th- this is, this is, it, it is not good budgeting and is not wise budgeting. If we are going to follow the governor's course on this, then doesn't that simply require tax increases, uh, whether it's a sales tax or income tax? And politically, would that mean the governor would have to hope for very good news for Democrats in in the fall election? What about the impact on individual North Carolinians, many of whom are out of a job, some people working part-time because they're old job is still mandated out of existence. I mean, it just seems like, you know, a a terrible concoction uh, to go forward. Yeah. uh, And the governor is waiting for and hoping that by by putting these things off that eventually we will get a second round of federal money for the state uh, and for local governments. That's what the News and Observer and Charlotte Observer both asked for in their editorials earlier this week. uh, And that's what his his statements uh, in the memos that two agencies have said is that we're going to wait for federal certainty, which means fle- both flexibility, which we've called for, and more money on top of that. So that's but, that's the danger. But that's the problem is, of course, federal tax dollars come from the very same people in North yeah. Carolina who also pay state tax dollars. So that doesn't seem like much of a solution. It's a bad it's a bad situation that we're in. Either higher taxes now or higher t- and higher taxes later because the federal government is taking on additional deficits and debt.